I want to start by reading a scripture in Matthew in chapter 22, verses 37 through 40. And Yeshua said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So this is, it shouldn't be, but it, it's almost, it's become like a controversial uh, scripture in some ways. For a lot of people, they'll say, well, it's not controversial for me because um, this, is the, this is the problem. We all know we understand the Bible according to to how we understand the Bible. But when you talk with somebody else, they could say the same thing, but come up with a completely different conclusion. So what I wanna talk about is how many people, when we look at that, we see love God, love your neighbor, right? Love the Father, love Yeshua, love your neighbor. And uh, it makes perfect sense. And so when um, people, you hear a lot of people talking about keeping the Sabbath or the holy days, uh, yeah, that's good, but it, you never hear them referenced to with like held up in great importance when we're talking about the gospel. Now, did I just say that they're low importance? No, but they're not pointed to because they were a given. It was a given that you would keep the Sabbath and the holy days and that you would do all of those things that we were commanded to do that were never done away with. But that's and that's why they're not mentioned. They're a given. Um, they're mentioned only in passing. The Sabbath is mentioned, but it's never. People say, why is the Sabbath not uh, reiterated and commanded in the New Testament? Because it would be as absurd as saying, you must recognize that the sky is blue when you can see the sky is blue, to come out and have to say, you must keep the Sabbath when everybody was already keeping the Sabbath. It was uh, it was ridiculous. It's, it's like coming out and saying, and now we declare that Wednesday comes after Tuesday. What? We know the days of the week and we know when the Sabbath is. That's why it's not reiterated. But it's also nothing to be so proud of and to bring up all the time. I'm bringing it up now to say because of this, like so many uh, believers, so many people who keep the Sabbath in the holy days, um, it might be all they talk about, but please get past that. Do it, definitely. I mean, and there's a time that you might want to talk about that maybe with somebody who has questions about it um, and they're not they're not familiar with how to keep the Sabbath or the holy days. Uh, yeah, but if that's like your main identifying uh, characteristic, uh, that's not what we see in Scripture. In Scripture, it is that love of God, love of the Father and Yeshua above all, and love of the, your neighbor of people all around you, not just people in your church, but your neighbor, other people created in the image of Elohim and showing that love. Now, on the other hand, you have people who read this scripture and say, see, we don't have to keep the law because it just says, love God and love your neighbor. That's all you have to do. It doesn't say that. Really, it's in most people who say that, I have to wonder, I know that we're educated people and we understand what we're reading and we know when you really look at it it doesn't say that you're being naive you're taking it out of context and the bible needs to be re read in context there is one author to the bible there were 66 books and many people who wrote those books but there's one author now if you don't believe that there's one author that the Father and the Son are the authors of the Bible, well, then we're not on the same uh, level. We're not, I mean, we're not, I'm not saying I'm above your level or something. I'm saying we're not, we don't even have a common starting point. The At least our common starting point should be to admit that the Bible is Elohim, it's Yahweh, it's our Father and Yeshua inspired. They are the Word. He and Yeshua is called in John 1.1, 1, 1, he's called the Word. All of these are his words given to all of these people to put down in black and white and sometimes red and white in a in a book for us. Uh, so let's there is one message throughout the entire Bible, and that is that we do not have eternal life of ourselves. We sin and the result of sin 
of tra- and sin is the transgression of the law. The result of that is death. This is all scriptural. Look it up for yourself. The result of sin is death and not death of the body because I've already sinned. We've all sinned and we're still alive. It's spiritual death. It's ultimate cessation of existence. Our Father and Yeshua don't want that for us. They love us. We're their children. They want us to have eternal life like they do, and that's the gift. The gift of eternal life. Eternal life with them. We are not born with with eternal life. We do not have eternal life inherently in us. Otherwise, why would we need Yeshua's sacrifice? Why did he have to die on the cross if we already have eternal life? To get eternal life, we must be repent and be baptized in Yeshua, the Messiah. And he is our savior. He saves us from eternal death. And they offer us eternal life. And so the love the father and love your neighbor, when he says all the law and the prophets hang on this, right? That's the word he said, hang, yeah. It's a, I'm a teacher, and I know that I often, when my students are having difficulty with a different topic, I try to think of a way to bring it across to them, sometimes a shorthand or a rule of thumb. But that doesn't replace all of the rule. If I teach, langu- I teach language and I teach grammar, I might come up with a rule of thumb. That doesn't mean that the student can ignore all the rest, even though they might like to. They still have, if they're learning Spanish or a language, they still have to know how to conjugate the verbs. They have to think about tenses. They have to think about grammar rules. They can't just say, well, I know that there's masculine and feminine in Spanish, so that's good enough, that all of it depends on that. No, that's not true. It's important to understand that concept. And maybe I can come up with a rule of thumb to help you to learn how to use this verb and that verb in different situations. But that doesn't explain the whole thing. It's just a rule of thumb. And that's where this, it, all of the law and the prophets, he even says the law and the prophets. And he, did, and he specifically says, Yeshua specifically says in Matthew 5, 17-ish around there, do not think that I came to destroy the law and the prophets. So he, he comes right out and says he didn't come to destroy the law and the prophets. And yet he says, don't think that. And everyone thinks that. Why is it? Why is it like, oh, it seems like more than 90% of so-called Christianity believes that he came to destroy the law and the prophets. It's really weird. He says, I didn't come to destroy the law and the prophets. And then right here, he says that these two things, love your father and love your neighbor, hang on the law and the prophets. So, right, that's what he says right there at the end, the law and the prophets. Yeah, in verse 40, um, Matthew 22, verse 40, he says it hangs on it. Well, if they don't exist, then it's hanging. Loving the father and loving your neighbor are hanging on nothing, right? If you're saying it doesn't exist, so the, uh, the law and the prophets do exist, but he's giving us a shorthand The shorthand to keep it, to always remember it easily is that the Law and the Prophets are always going to bring us to love the Father with all your heart and mind and soul and love your neighbor the same way. If you do that, like with with that shorthand, you can basically figure out every situation in life. You know, if you come up to a situation, you're like, hmm, what do I do here? What does it say in the Bible about it? Well, that's why the law, we should study the law and have it written on our heart. If it's on our heart, it's pumping, it's in our blood, it's in our whole body and in our mind, in our eyes, in our mouth, in our hands. Everything we do, we can look at a situation and we don't have to say, oh, well, it doesn't actually ever say it anywhere in the Bible. The Bible, that teaches us how to put it in our heart, learn from all those precepts, and now apply it to every situation. Does it have to be written specifically in black and white for you to do it? If I have a swimming pool in my backyard, it doesn't talk about swimming pools in the Bible. Shouldn't I put a fence around the swimming pool because I love my neighbor and I don't want my neighbor or their kids or their their pets to come into my yard and possibly fall into my pool and drown? I don't want any injury or any harm happening to other people because I love them. I love the Father, I love Yeshua, and I love my neighbor. So I can go, I don't, it doesn't have to be written in black and white. But does that, applying it that way, does that do away with the black and white? Does that do away with the Law and the Prophets? 
No, and that's what Yeshua said. Don't think that I came to do away with the Law and the Prophets. But we, our, our main characteristic, do you want, do you think it's the most important thing about us is that we keep the Sabbath and the Holy Days and we eat kosher and these things? Or is it that we have the love of Yeshua, the love of the Father, and it just, you can see it, it comes out of us in our actions? Or maybe you can't see it because we do things, we do them, we don't let anyone know, but we're helping people as much as we can. We're doing the right thing. We're living the right life and being a good example. I'd rather that. I, the fact that I try to keep the Sabbath and the Holy Days correctly, and now it's been so many thousands of years, who knows? I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm most likely not keeping them correctly, but I try. I try because it is the commandment. It is there in the word, in the book, and I want to keep it. I want to do those things right. I learn from them, and then I can expand them outward. And anyone I've seen who says, no, I just do the love part and I throw all that out. I don't need that they almost always go astray because they always reduce it. It gets less and less and less and less and less in their life. And they just start coming up. And like scripture even says that, they just make up righteousness in their own brain, in their own mind. They don't, tr do they, they don't trust the Father's righteousness in his teachings. He, they who have existed for all eternity, they have no beginning or end. Does it make sense to not trust their word? I think I'm going to trust the all, the eternal beings who created us out of nothing. I think I'm going to trust their word over the thoughts that happen to pop into my mind or my own version of what's good or bad. That's definitely not a good way to go. And it sounds a lot like someone, a character, a person in the Bible who we know who trusted, whenever they trust themselves, they go off into a dark place. I'm gonna trust my father and his son, my, my Lord and King and Savior. I'm gonna trust their words. They've existed forever. They will always exist. They are the creators of everything. I'm gonna trust their word. They know they are, otherwise, what is this all about? I'm gonna to try to keep, continue to keep the Sabbath and the Holy Day, but it's not my identifying marker. It's like, hey, look, I'm keeping, no, it's <laughs> keeping the Sabbath and the Holy Days is a blessing to me. Doing it, I didn't even do any kind of righteousness. Keeping the Sabbath, the Holy Days, eating kosher, all of the things in the law, doing it, I didn't even get, it's, it's the tip of the iceberg. I didn't even start doing anything righteous or good. The moment you help the orphan, or the widow, or you go outside of that, the person who's in need, you share the good news with somebody. You, you Just the idea of helping other people when they're in need and not thinking about ourselves. Now, now, now we're starting to get somewhere. Now we're starting to live what our Father and Yeshua were teaching, just to be doing a lot of activities. That's just, those are blessings for us to give us a good life, right? It makes sense to rest every seventh day, that just blesses me. It makes sure that I'm not overworking. I'm relaxing and I'm think, let, freeing my mind so I can think about my father and his work and his word and share it with other people and also give my, my body, my mind, my soul, my spirit a time to just relax from if your work is so intense, you're just working so hard all week long, you need a break from that. Some people don't take that break. But for some people who are lazy and are always on break, it teaches them to say, look, this is the day to rest. Six days you shall work, the Sabbath you shall rest. And it's the Sabbath. It's Shabbat, Shabbat, Shabbat and uh, seven and rest and Sabbath all have similar letters in them in Hebrew. That's the day. You can't change it to the first day of the week. You can't change it to Sunday, the first day of the week. No one has the right to change the Sabbath. It's not on Tuesday, it's not on Wednesday, and it does matter. It does matter what day it is, because the Father said, I created, he did the whole creation, and he didn't say on the third day, or the second day, or the fourth day, and this is the day I'll rest. He didn't do that. He waited, he did the, all the creation for six days, and on the seventh day he rested. No one has the right to change. He know again, he's the eternal being, he's our Father. He made us from nothing. And he said, let us make them in our image and in our likeness. I, 
I think we should trust our Father in Yeshua, the creators of everything who have always existed. 